While I was in there, this is a phrase that most all of us DIY car guys know just a little bit too well. Sometimes this is a good thing, like if you replace your rear main seal because you have your transmission out for a rebuild anyway, this makes sense. But more often than not, and more so with performance cars, a while you're in there repair, it's not really a repair at all. It's more of an excuse to make our cars go faster. And that is exactly what we're doing in today's video. <laughs> Woo! And here is our somewhat normal issue with the E55 and what's kicking off the replacement of practically everything in the front of the engine here, including the supercharger pulley. So we're gonna get more boost out of this deal. And that would be the water pump right there. You can see it's kind of uh, banging around a little bit and that's because the bearing is shot. So if you let this go long enough, it will start to leak and eventually it can break and the pulley will come off and make a gigantic mess of things. And we don't want that to happen. Now we could just simply replace the water pump and call it a day but you know we're not gonna do that. Okay guys, the first couple steps to this job are very easy. You're gonna open the hood to your car, put it in the service position if you'd like, and then remove the cap from the coolant reservoir. Then, you're simply just gonna drain out all of the antifreeze. Now, pro tip here, when you turn the petcock on the radiator, if antifreeze doesn't immediately start coming out, don't pull out the petcock all the way or you will completely douse yourself like I just did. <laughs> Next up is removing the engine fan and this step is very important because it's gonna give us a ton of room to get to everything we need to get to and it's gonna allow me to show you guys how to do this job in a very clear and easy to understand fashion. And if you guys appreciate learning like that, then you're gonna absolutely love today's video sponsor, Skillshare.com. Skillshare.com is a massive online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Right now, I'm taking a class by Gary Vanderchuk, and if you guys don't know who he is, then seriously, check out this course. He goes over building a social media presence in a very raw and straight-to-the-point method that Gary is very well known for, and yes, they let him be himself here, so warning, he swears just a little bit. Now, just like doing this water pump job at home, Skillshare is also very affordable with annual memberships starting as low as $10 a month, and a premium subscription gets you unlimited access to take all of their classes. And you guys can join the more than 7 million people learning on Skillshare right now by clicking on my link in the video description box. And this is gonna get you two full months of premium access totally free. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get to work. And here are all the parts we're gonna be installing in today's video. We have a brand new Mercedes-Benz water pump and gasket, a new thermostat and housing, and of course our coolant. And everything you see here is sold as a kit by none other than FCP Euro. So that means what you're looking at here all carries a lifetime warranty. And if you guys are replacing your water pump on one of these cars, it's an excellent time to replace the thermostat as well, especially if you have 100,000 miles like I do. So I'll leave a link uh, to this kit down below. Now here are all the parts that I'm gonna be replacing. Say it with me while I'm in there. And everything you see right here came from Victory Road Performance in Virginia. Now you guys know I have their clutched supercharger pulley. I have a 76 millimeter pulley on my car right now, but I want some more boost. So I went with a fixed 72 millimeter pulley and I'll go over the difference between fixed and clutched here in a minute. Uh, and then we have a new bolt and washer. This is part of a really cool dress up kit that they sell. Uh, and then we also have pretty much all the replaceable pulleys that you can replace on an M113K. So this is a pulley for the water pump right here. Uh, and these are all the other pulleys in the front of the engine, which we're gonna be replacing. And I'll show you obviously uh, here in a few minutes. But what I like about these, these are billet pulleys, but they have Naki bearings. These are made in Japan. These are some of the best bearings available. Uh, so I will leave a link uh, and a coupon code for 10% off to Victory Road Performance in the video description box down below. Okay, so my first step is removing this belt wrap kit. And what this does is it assists in holding tension on the supercharger pulley belt. Uh, that way it doesn't slip, which can happen when you go with a smaller supercharger pulley. So the first step is just 
loosening up the belts here, taking the tension off of the belts uh, so that you're not removing a pulley that's under tension that would uh, ruin it. So basically, we're just gonna loosen these up. And then with this belt wrap kit, you just have a couple of, let's see, what are these? These are eight millimeter Allens. So we're just gonna break those loose. Now just be careful when you're working uh, with the radiator right here that you don't puncture it. Some people put cardboard uh, in front of it. That is not a bad idea at all. We're just gonna be gentle. But here is the belt wrap kit. It comes off uh, kind of all together. So this is a really nice and easy uh, kit. Inexpensive way to make sure that the supercharger uh, belt is not slipping. So let's take a look at what a clutched supercharger is. Uh, and I can show you that pretty easily by spinning it by hand. So from the factory on the M113K, and I think this is one of the only cars that has this kind of system, uh, basically your supercharger is free spinning. So this, this right here, this larger portion uh, behind the pulley is actually connected to the blades inside of the supercharger to create boost. Uh, so basically this is free spinning as you're just putzing around town. Uh, and then there are certain parameters uh, like load and throttle position and whatnot uh, that will send power to this magnetic clutch. This is a magnetic clutch system and this pulley will actually suck itself closed. It's hard to see, but there's a gap right here. Uh, and then it is a direct drive and spinning the supercharger. So uh, this is a cool system. It's just that when you go with a smaller supercharger pulley, that engagement can be kind of harsh, especially when you're just driving around town. Um, and I really don't like it. And most all other supercharged cars, uh, like your ZL1, ZR1, all the uh, Cobra Mustangs and everything, they all have fixed pulleys. So I'm gonna go that route right now in this video. Uh, and then I have to put a new tune in the car because I believe uh, it won't even run if you don't tune for the fixed uh, pulley because it's not expecting uh, all of that air coming from the supercharger at idle. Oh, and one more thing. If you guys go with a fixed pulley on an M113K, make sure your cooling system for the intercooler is in check because these cars from the factory have a pre-programmed safety feature where if it senses too high of an intake air temperature, it will disengage that supercharger clutch so you don't produce any more boost because too high of intake air temperatures and too much boost can make your engine blow up. Uh, so you wanna have a bigger heat exchanger, you wanna have a bigger coolant pump, possibly a bigger tank to hold that coolant. But I think the most important safety is being able to monitor your intake air temperatures. That way you know if they're getting too high and you let off. And I also believe there is another safety built in which we're not getting rid of uh, in the bypass valve, which is inside of the supercharger. I believe that will alleviate boost pressure as well. But there are plenty of guys with fixed pulleys without any issues, but make sure that your cooling system for the intercooler is working properly. All right, so we're going to remove the pulley for the water pump first. And actually, it's probably best to leave the belt on for this. But if you have one of these electric uh, ratchets, you'll have no problem just holding it and it, they'll come right out. There's our pulley. All right, so we can take a really good look at what's going on here to get our water pump off. Uh, first things first, it looks like we're gonna have to remove uh, this tensioner right here. And this plate right here is part of the belt wrap kit. So this is all gonna come off first because it is right here going over the water pump. Uh, then we have a couple of hoses down here that we have to remove from the water pump. Uh, and then it's basically just removing uh, one bolt at a time. And I would pay attention to what holes these bolts go in because some of them uh, are different. Some of them might be a different length as well. You can see this one is different from this one uh, and so on. All right, a little trick when you're removing this tensioner, you have to get this pulley out of the way because there's a bolt in here. So just take a drill bit. There's an actual pin for this, but I don't have it. Uh, and there's a hole here and it goes into another slot. You stick that in and that's it. It'll hold itself in kind of a service position so you can remove and install it. Guys, look at how easy it is to get the supercharger pulley bolt off with the uh, fan out of the way if you have an impact. That's it. <laughs> so most of the... Uh, most of the electric uh, impacts will get this off too. It's not on there. I, I think it's only like 40 foot pounds or something like that. I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know. Uh, but yeah, very easy. I'm just doing this now uh, just to get as much room as we can working in here. That's all we got to do it anyway. Then you just pull it off. 
Ugh, that's it. Let's see, I didn't have any shims in here. You gotta shim these sometimes to get the clearance just right. And I just realized that I already replaced the thermostat and housing a couple of years ago. I'd totally forgotten. It's only been like 5,000 miles, so I'm not gonna replace that again. But if one of you guys out there needs a thermostat and housing for an M113K, uh, just follow me at Legit Streetcars on Instagram, send me a message, and I'll mail it right out to you. There's always more coolant, so have a drain pan underneath the car. Not a bad time to do your hoses as well. I did mine not too long ago. Whoa, even more coolant. All right, we're really getting a good flush. Okay, this uh, water pump is ready to come out. Okay, so I have the new water pump on the ground and I'm putting the bolts in there one by one because there are uh, many different sizes and lengths and whatnot so you don't want to get that all mixed up you're just going to waste a bunch of time later so right now we are on the last one which is a massive bolt that goes through the alternator as well and i did the alternator last year so now i got a new alternator and a new water pump replacing things one by one that is the european way little nudge with the pry bar don't go crazy and she comes right out all right Look at that, our old water pump. Let's see if we can see how bad this is. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. You can see the scrape marks. You can see the scrape marks when this thing was just chewing into the uh, housing. This is why if you have any play, you really want to replace this right away. Otherwise you'll get all this metal inside of the cooling system. No good. All right, so what's nice is we don't have an old school graphite gasket that we have to spend hours scraping away and cleaning. These use a rubber uh, seal, which is really nice. So I'll still get a wire brush in here just to clean the area a little bit. Uh, but this is gonna seal up perfectly with very, very minimal effort. So uh, we'll do a big cleaning uh, overall with some brake clean up front here. Uh, and then we gotta replace this pulley here which is just the bolt right there. So replacing all these pulleys is actually super easy to do, guys. And if they have a lot of miles on them, uh, it's a good idea to replace these. Like my car has 108,000 miles. Uh, so it, it is about time for some bearings. They are starting to make a little bit of noise. Uh, and these can leave you stranded if one of them was to go out on the road. Uh, so it is nice to replace those, especially well, while we're in there. How many times am I gonna say that? <laughs> so here is our new water pump. And as you can tell, I just simply transferred all of our bolts right in there so we know exactly where they go and we're not gonna waste any time reinstalling the pump. All right, everything is cleaned up and ready to go. We have our new water pump gasket installed. The water pump is ready to go on, and I even cleaned up the bolts a little bit. Uh, but something I wanted to show you guys, I'm supposed to be replacing this pulley with one of the billet ones. There's nothing wrong with this, but for some reason, Mercedes-Benz used a tamper-proof Torx bolt uh, to hold this on, as if people will be messing with that, and all that requires is a tool like this. All it has is a little hole in the middle so you can fit it over there. Now, I've broken two of these off. Uh, th there's no way this one is gonna survive. Uh, so I'm done, guys. I actually gotta get this car back on the road. I'm not gonna go play around with this anymore. Uh, later on, when this tensioner actually fails, I'll remove it uh, and do this on a bench. But believe it or not, I have seven cars right now and every single one of them has an issue and I actually need my E55 uh, to get to work tonight. I was driving home last night and the Corvette was bucking and surging, so that's out. Well, actually, I do have my Trans Am. That thing's still good to go, but Either way, I gotta get this E55 back on the road. So we need to put this all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt up uh, the water pump and then we're moving on to the pulleys.
Make sure to start all of these by hand. And you don't have to leave all the bolts in here when you're installing it. Some can fall out, but I kind of like doing this this way. Okay, the water pump is bolted up, but I haven't torqued it yet because I wanted to show you something that is very, very important. I've shown you these manuals a million times. There'll be a link down below, of course. They're only like 20 bucks. But uh, these water pumps, they have like a bunch of different size bolts, as you can see here in this diagram. And all of these bolts require a different torque spec. And you will snap some of the smaller ones um, if you don't follow these torque specs. So you can see right here. This is in newton meters, so we have a difference from 14 to 35 to 10 to 25. So there's a big difference in the torque spec. So uh, I'll link these down below or I'll just list them down below for you guys if you don't have a manual, but you can pick one of those up uh, as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque down uh, the water pump right now. Uh, and then what I already did here was these pulleys for the belt wrap. Uh, so we installed these two are brand new. These are the old ones right here. And this is very self-explanatory, guys. The pulleys are identical. You just swap them out just like they came off. And then this one here, uh, we're going to take off. No tamper-proof torques, which is fantastic. So I'll probably just put the impact on there and zip it off. So anyway, uh, let's get to it. All right guys, so if these pins shear off, don't worry about it. This fixed pulley uh, is super, super tight on this snout. Uh, and I actually uh, heated it up just to get it over because we couldn't even get it over. That's uh, another way uh, that it's fixed. So right now I've heated up the pulley and you have to do this. If you use the shear pins, you have to heat this up because there's no way you'll be able to spin the pulley to kind of find those pins. Uh, and it can be a pain even. Okay, there we go. So now I know we're in the pins and now we can just kind of tap it. All right, there you go. See the pins pointing out there. Actually, you know what? I thought that this was supposed to go right to the clutch and kind of suck in, but I'm mistaken. It actually is just such a tight fit on the snout. Uh, and trust me, I could not even get this thing on uh, without heating it up. So I already Loctited our bolt and then the, the washer has the little holes for the pins too. I'm kind of acting fast. I want this to be bolted in perfectly uh, before it cools off. So we want this pin to rest in there nicely. I mean, the uh, washer and the pins. Okay, there's that. Always start the bolt by hand. All right, now I will be torquing this. I'll drop a video link down below uh, where I kind of show you how I set this all up to be torqued. but. Right now we are one to one and we have a fixed supercharger pulley on. So I'm gonna go ahead, wrap up the belt. Uh, we are going to fill her with coolant and go for a ride. All right guys, everything is wrapped back up. I just have to put the fan in and bleed out the coolant, upload the new tune for the fixed pulley and we are going for a ride to see what this thing feels like now. But I do wanna mention just a couple things really quick that I learned. I thought that uh, this would suck itself into the uh, magnet here and ride up against the clutch, but it doesn't. There's actually a gap here. Uh, and I found out that is totally normal. It just is such a tight fit on this snout. And then once you put this bolt on, this is uh, 40 Newton meters, by the way. Uh, once you torque that on there, that it just holds it right up against the snout and it is fixed. So it's normal to have a little gap there. Uh, also, when you're doing a water pump on these M1, 13s for some stupid reason they don't tap all of the holes in the pump so 
where this bolt goes through, it's not tapped. You have to tap that out. Uh, and then there's a couple more over here. It's not a big deal. And actually the aluminum is so soft, you can use the bolt if you'd like. But if you have a tap, uh, you can just tap those holes out. Uh, and that is it guys. I think that's everything you need to know. Oh, also, uh, when you have the belt on, you can tighten these tens up really, really nicely. Uh, and I put some Loctite on those bolts and on pretty much all the other bolts, uh, that we have here. But I really want to do that tensioner down there because this looks really, really cool. <laughs> So you guys hear that rattle noise? That is actually normal when you put a fixed pulley on these cars. They have a little bit of a rattle at idle. It goes away as soon as you get off idle. Uh, but everyone has pretty much said the same thing, that that just happens. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, they say once you go fixed, you don't go back. And I'm gonna have to agree for now. There are some pros and cons, but I will say this, the car is much faster with this smaller pulley. Uh, I haven't even been able to pay attention to how much boost it's making now, uh, but I'm gonna assume hopefully 13, 14 pounds. Uh, so let's go over some pros and cons of this fixed pulley uh, and my driving impressions because this is actually the next day. I've been driving this car for uh, about the last 30 miles or so, and my wife drove it too. So uh, I have some opinions on the fixed pulley. Some are good, some are bad. You guys make your decision. Okay, well first and foremost, it's instantaneous power, guys. If you're on a street tire, uh, you might as well just put it in comfort mode. I have it in sport right now, and it is just instant torque right off the line. There is no delay, no nothing. So that feels awesome. And after you get used to the pedal, kind of being a lot more sensitive, uh, you, you know, you can drive it in sport. It's just, <sighs> I gave it to my wife. I put it in comfort mode because it's just, it's a little jerky off the line, but. I mean, that would be the same sensation you'd feel from any really fast car uh, with this style supercharger strapped right on the top of the engine. These produce a lot of torque right off the line and that's honestly kind of what we want. So the biggest plus is the no delay in power whatsoever. It's instant power, basically at any speed, at any RPM, it just pulls, it, it just, this car feels so much faster now. I mean, the fact that it has a 72 millimeter pulley, uh, the race IQ tune, the long tube headers, the 82 millimeter throttle body, if it wasn't a panoramic sunroof car that weighs a lot, uh, this could potentially be like a 10 second car. We're gonna find out very, uh, very soon. So 10 second luxury sedan is definitely, definitely my goal with this car. Uh, so the downsides to the fixed pulley, uh, you guys heard the rattle type of noise at idle. I would say that's really the only downside, or let's just say one of the downsides. You, you can't hear it in the car really at all, so don't worry about that. But outside of the car, like if you pulled up into a car show parking lot or something, you were idling into your spot, people might say, hey, there's something wrong with your car. And everybody has reported the exact same thing with these fixed pulleys, is that they make this kind of marbly, rattly sound. And again, uh, I don't have any personal experience with longevity of the supercharger, but so many guys have been running fixed pulleys for many, many years. No one's reported any premature wear of the supercharger. So debate that in the comment section if you'd like. Uh, the only other downside I'd say with a fixed pulley is what I said earlier, uh, which is you kind of lose that safety where it can disengage the supercharger clutch. But this is something else that's been discussed many times where there's a bypass inside of the supercharger. So if it heats up too much, it could uh, bypass your boost that way as well. Now, obviously, Mercedes designed it to have both safeties. So I'm not saying it's gonna be as safe. Uh, you are modifying your car, so inherently you are making things less safe, more prone to braking. Uh, so take it for, for what you will. The fixed supercharger pulley does get rid of that safety feature, but if you're monitoring your intake air temperatures and if you have a very stout intercooler system, uh, you should be fine. So overall, 
I really like it, and what's nice is they're only, I, I don't know, like two to $300, they're very cheap. They're very, very easy to install once you remove that fan. It's, you know, a few minutes if you heat the pulley up before you slide it on, it's very, very easy. So if you don't like it, you can always go back to the clutch. So right now, I'm definitely keeping it. I'm loving the added power. I'm loving the added responsiveness of the car. Uh, but later on, guess what? I can always get the same diameter pulley in a clutched pulley. I think they have a 70 and a 72 millimeter clutch. So. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted, but right now I really do like this fixed pulley. I'm going to take it to the track as is. I mean, we're pretty much done with mods uh, right now, so this is going to the track as soon as it clears up uh, as far as weather. It's like 100 degrees every day right now. Uh, so anyway, with that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, if something breaks on your car, just look around. Look around. See if there's anything at all that you can modify while you're in there. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.